Hello? Ah, giant bug. Ah, oh my God. Studio Steve? Studio Steve? What are we doing here? Why are we in the jungle? What does this have to do with compression? You know what? I like that idea. Yeah. You know, I've never realized before that you were so versatile. Hello, Podskies. I'm Veronica, and this is the Pod Sound School. Today, we're going to teach you all about compression. So by the end of this video, you will be able to understand what compression is, how it works, and you will be able to put it to use on your podcast mixes, no matter what DAW you use. Compression is the most used tool in audio production, and it's one of the key elements to make your voice sound professional. So today, I'm gonna help Studio Steve teach you all about compression. But before we get going, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And if you haven't downloaded our free guide to jumpstart your podcast yet, go on the description below and click on the link. And join us on our Facebook group, Podcasting for Buses. Okay, let's get to it and out of this jungle. Hey everyone, Studio Steve here, and I hope you're ready to dive into compression. I'll make this quick and informative for you. So in order to demonstrate how basic compressors work for you, I asked Veronica to read through one of her favorite Spanish poems from her childhood. I asked her to be as dynamic as she could, meaning to fluctuate her volumes from as low as a whisper to as loud as a yell. Audio compression is also referred to as dynamic range compression. This is because it compresses the dynamic range and makes it less dynamic. A simple way of saying what compression does is it makes what is louder quieter and what is quieter louder. Let's find out how a compressor does this and how we adjust the settings. We're gonna use this basic compressor that comes with all of the Pro Tools versions because it has a graphical display that helps us to visualize the components of a compressor and it also has an input and output meter and also this handy GR or gain reduction meter. So before we take a listen to Veronica's recordings and add compression to them, let's learn what the components of a common compressor are. They are threshold, ratio, attack, release, and gain. Gain is also commonly called output. Most compressors will also have a handy meter that displays what is called gain reduction. Okay, so let's get started with threshold. Threshold is a line we set on the volume spectrum that tells the compressor how much of the audio to compress or apply gain reduction to. Here you can see as I adjust this orange knob that we see the line move from left to right along this graph. The numbers along the bottom of the graph represent our volume spectrum. Minus 60 dB is the quietest, essentially the silence, and the zero to the right here is the loudest. So when our audio coming through this track is barely at a whisper, it will be much closer to the left side of this graph near the minus 60 dB. So if we were to set the threshold all the way up to minus 60 dB, we would be compressing the entire spectrum of the audio. Likewise, if we were to set it to the minus zero dB, we wouldn't be compressing anything at all. Next, the ratio. Ratio tells the compressor how much gain reduction to apply based on how many dBs cross the threshold or the orange line. You'll notice that if I set the ratio using the knob to a one to one ratio, the white line here becomes even, corner to corner. This signifies that there is not gain reduction being applied. As I raise this knob, watch the shape of the white line change. You'll notice that the shape only changes after the threshold, not before it. As I drag the knob all the way to the right, the line becomes completely horizontal. So what does this mean? Well, a common place to start with vocal compression is three to one ratio. This means that for every three dB that the audio crosses the threshold, the compressor will reduce its gain down to one dB. If the audio crosses the threshold by 6 dB, then the compressor would reduce it to 2 dB, or by a third. As the ratio gets higher, so does the gain reduction. I like to think of it as how forgiving or hard or soft the threshold is. 
If I set the ratio all the way to 100 to 1, that basically means that no audio at all will be allowed to cross the threshold. Okay, moving on to attack and release. Adjusting the attack determines how fast this gain reduction will take place. This is another way of determining how hard or forgiving our orange line or our threshold is. You'll notice as I turn the knob from left to right, I get two different units of measurement. One is MS or milliseconds, and to the left, we get this US abbreviation, which is for microseconds. A microsecond is a thousandth of a millisecond, so they are very fast. This means that if I turn this knob all the way to the left, the compressor will apply the gain reduction almost immediately. Whereas if I turn it all the way to the right, it will apply it more gradually, and the threshold will seem more forgiving and natural. The release component tells the compressor how long, basically, to hold on to the gain reduction. So the attack pushes down and the release lets go. So the release knob here actually kind of works backwards from the attack knob. If I turn it all the way to the left, it will let go very quick, and as a result, create a softer, more natural compression. If I turn it all the way to the right, the milliseconds turns into seconds, and the compressor will be more aggressive, and that threshold will seem much harder. And lastly, we have a gain knob. Because we are reducing dBs, or volume, dependent on our settings, the gain knob lets us make up for the reduction and to boost the whole signal so we still have a nice output happening on our track, which is also why it's called output. A good way to adjust this is to monitor how many dBs of gain reduction you're averaging, and then boost that many at the output. Okay, so let's pull up Veronica's recording and see if we can't make sense of how all this works. You'll notice on her audio track I have a compressor set up on the insert section, so her voice will pass through this compressor before moving through the rest of the channel. First, let's put the threshold at zero so that no compression will be applied, and just have a listen to her recording. El hijo de rana, rin rin renacuajo, salió esta mañana muy tieso, muy majo, con pantalón corto, corbata la moda, sombrero encintado y chupa de boda. Muchacho, no salgas! Now, let's keep the ratio at three to one and the attack and the release where they are. Let's play back her voice and start to adjust the threshold. This compression graph is cool because it gives us a moving red square that represents her voice volume. As I lower the threshold, take a look at this meter here marked GR, which stands for gain reduction. This shows us how much gain reduction is happening. Notice what happens when I turn the threshold all the way down to minus 60 dB. As you can see, that's a whole lot of gain reduction. And take a look at the output meter here. Our output level is now very low. So I'd have to adjust the gain knob here until I get a decent output level. This is where we are making the what's quieter louder. You will hardly ever see someone compress a vocal this heavily. But this is a great demonstration of how compressors work, especially by processing it onto the waveform. So let's look at the waveform of her audio track. You can see just looking at the waveform how dynamic it is. Let's copy the waveform onto another track and process this heavy compression onto it to see what happens. Notice how squeezed the audio has become. Even the areas of audio that were basically silent, like the room tone, has now become very apparent. That is because we boosted the gain so much. So now, let me show you a Studio Steve compression setting that I commonly use on vocals that is a great place to start. You'll see the threshold is at minus 25, the ratio is at 3 to 1, the attack is 15 milliseconds, the release is 25 milliseconds, and the gain is plus 6 dB. I'll apply these settings to Veronica's recording, and now let's look at the gain reduction. A good rule of thumb is to keep your gain reduction averaging around minus 3 to minus 4 dBs of gain reduction. And the big spikes or outbursts of your recording, they can have a gain reduction around 8 to 12 dBs. So starting from these basic vocal compression settings, we can now fine tune the knobs to achieve a nice gain reduction and output level. And now, quickly before we finish up, I want to pull up Adobe Audition and show you a compressor there. 
This compressor in Adobe Audition is similar to what you will find in Audacity. You'll notice that there are not any meters or a way to pass the audio through it as it plays, similar to Audacity. We would just have to adjust the settings. I have Veronica's same vocal track take on here, and I'll just enter Studio Steve's vocal settings, and now I know it will sound nice for the mix. Okay, there you have it, Podskis. Hope this was useful. There you go, Podskis. I hope you learned a lot in this video. And if you're still confused, come and find us on social media at Pod Sound School, and come and join our Facebook group, Podcasting for Bosses. We would love to answer any questions that you may have, so leave them in the comment section below. And until then, happy casting. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.